Welcome to another edition of Pants Optional. It's Pop Code HQ's interview segment via Zoom, where we connect with people within the comic book industry and get the lowdown, but from the waist up. My name is Jason Bennett. I'm Chief Editor, editor at Pop Code HQ. Today, I'm joined by writer, creator, and editor Tom Payer, who has written numerous titles at Marvel and DC. He's collaborated and worked with some big names in the industry like Mark Wade and Neil Gaiman, Hart Seeley, John Lay, you name it. Uh, currently, he's working on a lot of titles at Ahoy Comics, where he's the editor in chief. Uh, Ahoy Comics currently has the volume two trade paperback of Edgar Allan Poe's Snifter of Terror, which is available now in comic book stores, stores but is hitting bookstores next week on October 6th. Plus the new volume of the Snifter series entitled Ed Allan Poe's Snifter of Blood debuts its premiere later this month on Wednesday, October 21st. So please welcome my guest, Mr. Tom Payer. Tom, how are you? Doing, doing wonderful. How uh, you're out in New York? We're in Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse. Okay. Uh, how, how are things out there for you? Staying safe and healthy? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. We've got a. It's uh, it's our, our positive test rate is pretty low right now, so we're pretty happy about that. Okay. Let's let's hope. First, we, schools and universities and stuff and there's plenty of opportunity for it to jump up again but right now we're all right okay okay that's good to hear um you know lots been going on with the hawaii comics uh you've really been making waves over the last couple of years with your uh, kind of signature blend of humor and horror social commentary snarky takes and and just wittiness around uh, across all your titles uh edgar Alan Poe's Snifter of Terror, which has now enjoyed two volumes, is set to release the collected edition for season two uh, in bookstores coming in like Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Indie, Indie Bound. Uh, hey, there it is. There it is. And that beautiful Richard Williams cover. Uh, aside from the great content and charm, as an editor, what stood out to you most about this second volume? Uh, was there like a moment captured or... Uh, perhaps a funny tale surrounding it, or maybe a creator who just really caught your eye during that second season. I love the slate of creators we have. There's so many great people in here. Carol Lay and Elisa Quitney and Rick Geary. A lot of people I've admired for years and years and years, and some, some people that I'm just finding out about. Like, for example, oh my God, there's Dean Motter. It's a really great lineup, you know. Uh, I'm, if I may say so myself, uh, a terrific uh, prose writer named Brendan Mallory, mm -hmm. who's in here for the first time, and Walt Shepard, a poet from Syracuse who's been uh, published for probably 55 years. And uh, wow, we've uh, we've got some fresh poems in here by him that I really love, and they're in, uh, they were uh, illustrated by Greg Scott. And Linda Medley's in here. It's just a great bunch of people. Sean Crystal is the artist uh, that I wasn't quite familiar with. It is okay. It's true. So, you know, it's, it's, always, it's always great to put anthologies together because you've got all these pieces and all these people and all these moving parts. And it's really absorbing work. But you get to work with so many people. And the main thing for me on any project or any Poe project is simply mocking and humiliating Edgar Allan Poe. That is the goal, always, and it's one of the most rewarding and enriching things I've done in my professional life. Okay, all right. Well, you, you're doing something right over there, and it looks like in this next season there's going to be more of that, a lot of more of a rotating cast of creators uh, <laughs> on each issue that's coming out in the uh, Snifter of Blood series. Uh, I see names that I saw attached to that one, similar uh, like Dean Motter, uh, Richard Williams, like I already mentioned, Greg Scott. But uh, I saw quite a, but, uh, a few names listed over the three issues that I've seen that are listed in uh, the previous catalog. Uh, who can we look forward to gracing the, the pages of this new volume that kicks off uh, later this month? We have a beautiful cover uh, on number one by Jill Thompson, 
that's your first time contributing to this. And she's wonderful, of course. And it's it's a black and white piece. It's in gray tones, which you don't see on covers very often these days. I think it'll really stand out, especially with the blood red. This is the that motorcycle cover, isn't it? Kind of there. Yeah, yeah. It's Edgar <laughs> Allan Poe with a motorcycle and a leather jacket and a 1950s looking girlfriend and. and uh, it, that piece just came out of Jill's head. I mean, I don't think we asked her to do that. <laughs> She's brilliant, as we all know. And we've got another, uh, there's been a series we've been running over the last couple of years in Poe that we're gonna collect someday on its own, probably. And it's called, it's by Mark Russell and Peter Snabier. And it's, uh, they call it the Monster Serials. And it's kind of like a hammer horror film starring monsters suggested by the ones from cereal boxes that you knew as a kid and who i can't right. really mention by name because lawyers <laughs> right. but, uh, th there are chocolatey obsessed vampires and uh, uh very obsessed ghosts and, and things like oh and, and evil leprechauns and it's just a wonderful series and that wow. continues number two. Oh, that's great. That's great. And and it sounds like uh, it looks like the desecration of Edgar Allan Poe is going to continue in this in this new volume. Uh, with the change of the name of the title, you went two seasons with it being Snifter of Terror and then it's switching to Snifter of Blood. Uh, is there a shift in the series direction or focus in any way with this new or is this, uh, you know, will it even affect the series? The um we call it Snifter of Terror, the first two runs of the book. In the second run, we call it Snifter of Terror, season two. And then a light bulb went off over our heads um, that this is a terrible way to name an anthology book because who starts reading anything with season two? They're going to assume they've missed something important, which they haven't, of course, because you can read these stories in any order, in any direction. But we thought, uh, rather than number the seasons, we would we would change up the nouns in the okay. title and uh, uh, maybe be a little more inviting to new readers. That way. So they come across more as they're self-contained within that volume and not necessarily a string of ones that you need to check the uh, previous volumes to be familiar with. Well, yes, absolutely. There's nothing you have to know. And even okay. with our only sort of continuing series. Uh, we've had two, we've had uh, Hunt Emerson's beautiful The Black Cat, silent slapstick, slap, slapstick stories. And you can read those in any order. Um, uh, we had those in the first two volumes. And we've got the, the serial monster stories. And you can, those will be a sad on hole someday, but you can start those anywhere. You don't have to have read previous chapters. Okay. And with this new volume and comparing to past seasons, can we, uh, as readers and fans, expect more of the prose stories and poetry and, and cartoons and stuff jam-packed in uh, each issue? Absolutely. Absolutely. We love doing that. And uh, the, the first issue has even more than usual. But I, we love that you can just get one of our comics and sit down with it and sit down with it for a while. You know, the way comic book storytelling has changed over the years and it's gotten so exploded, you can, there are 20 page stories you can read in four minutes. <laughs> and uh, we, want, we want to be able to sit with you for a while read some good dense comics and then have a bunch of short stories or puzzles or anything engaging poems in the back that you're getting, getting your money's worth a little more. And, so. and you definitely give the opportunity to showcase some more talent uh, in addition to the main story and right. uh, get, getting some more exposure for other creators involved there and, and people that are working with you at Ahoy. Uh, mm -hmm. so that, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's how we started with uh, Rick Geary and Carol Legg other people I admire. They started like illustrating those stories and then they ended up doing full blown comic book stories for us, which, which I loved. Nice, nice. And you were mentioning about uh, Jill Thompson taking uh, cover art for the first issue, 
But I noticed mm -hmm. that in this new volume, in the Snifter of Blood series, uh, you're going with a new cover artist each issue, whereas like the first two volumes, I think were all done by Richard Williams, weren't they? Yeah, we love Richard Williams' work. And Richard is, uh, and you'll be seeing his work again. You'll be seeing it in this run. You'll see an interior story. Um, uh, he's always welcome with us, and we love him. And he's, he, Richard did Mad Magazine covers for like years. And so that made him the perfect person. And that was our approach on these Poe covers, was to make Poe like our Alfred E. Newman, just put him in the middle of every situation. Right. We're continuing that now with, with, with a string of different artists. And we've got, we're going to have like, a, a next issue we have Poe on a spacewalk on the cover. And the issue after that, we've got him in, uh, I think he's got, oh right, he's got a knife between his teeth and he's underwater wrestling an octopus. Those are the kind of things we want to see. We want to put Poe and see how he, see, well, he's got to succeed or fail on his own. <laughs> That's great. That's great stuff. Um, you know, while I have you here, I want to talk about uh, your new title, Penultiman, which is also uh, fans can download issue number zero on Comicsology right now, but its first issue uh, releases next week as well. Uh, what can you tell us more about your superhero project uh, that you have with Alan Robinson? There it is. That's the variant, and then on the other side, this, this is the regular. Thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's that's a cover cover I'm familiar with. Yeah, yeah. Alan Robinson is wonderful. He's a wonderful cartoonish uh, artist, and I mean cartoonish in the sense that that he can go from funny to tragic, uh, from knocking to empathy, on a turn of a dime without changing his style at all. His characters are so human; they have such a range. Um, okay. Penultimate is, it's a superhero comic about like a really like most powerful, most popular, most beloved superhero in the world who um, has a painful secret that makes him hate himself. So while the world is adoring him and envying him, he's just, it's just chewing him up inside. And like in, like imposter syndrome or yeah well it, in the penultimate number zero uh, but it's bit dot lee slash penultimate is the short URL to get there and get that uh, free comic like from Comicsology penultimate zero but that was a story that we'd run before in a, a uh, anthology called Steel Cage and which was uh, more of a superhero in college. It was a one shot. But anyway, that was where Penelope's Man first appeared. And in this story, we find out that he is from the 91st century when evolution has stopped and people are the absolute ultimate that they will ever be. And they're amazing. Uh, but he's a throwback to the next to the last stage of human evolution. So they think of him as like a caveman. Uh, but to us, he's like this magnificent angel. So they sentence him to live in our time because he's embarrassing to have him around because he's so primitive. And um, that's his pains, the people, the world he grew into, it, the world he was born into and grew up in rejected him utterly and totally. And uh, so he, he blames himself and hates himself for it. So he's got, in this series, he's got, he's built himself an android understudy sidekick named anti Penultiman, who takes it upon himself to straighten Penultiman and, uh, psychologically and get him over his pain and over his self-defeating behaviors. And can he do that? Can a sidekick fix a superhero? Can an android fix a human? Can anybody fix anybody? And that's what the, that's what the story's about. It's really about these two characters bumping up against each other as one of them tries to fix the other one. I know I'm really excited about it. I, uh, a few years ago, uh, we, Pop Clay, she's been around for about five and a half years, and I know I did, I think, two reviews of your project with Mark Wade, uh, Captain Kid, and I, I loved it. I thought it was 
phenomenal superhero series. And uh, so that's what really caught my eye over the last five years with you. And, and I'm excited to see what you, what you got for Penultimate Man here, too, or Penultimate Man. Uh, yeah, thanks. Because, uh, yeah, you, you you really brought it with, uh, with that superhero title. Uh, hey, so we're around in the corner here. We're getting into fall. Uh, what's on slate for Ahoy Comics coming up here the rest of the year and into 2021 that people can be looking forward to? Well, we've got, um, we're launched, the next series we're launching is called Happy Hour. And it's by Peter Mulligan, who is great. And Michael Montana is the artist. And if you don't know Michael's name, you're going to love it. And um, it's about a near future America where um, it's illegal to be sad and the punishment is extremely cruel. So people have to, are legally bound to look happy all the time. <laughs> okay. So you know, if you know Peter and you know his writing, you know, he's got some. He starts from an interesting twist and then twists it for you. He's such a smart and original writer. <laughs> nice. And he, uh, I said, the first series I ever worked on from scratch, I was the assistant at the book, is uh, Shade the Changing Moons. So that was a mind blowing, wonderful book. We were very proud to be part of it, DC. But after that, we've got. Um, the Return of Second Coming, which is our uh, series about what would happen if another world's greatest superhero became roommates with um, the savior of mankind. A great series, Second Coming is a great title you guys have. It really is a true thing. It's written by Mark Russell, a friend from a minute ago, and uh, drawn by Richard Pace and uh, Leonard Kirk. When Kirk provides some of the most superhero touches in the book, and Richard's Richard lays out the whole thing. He, he does the uh, biblical and heaven, heavenly and scriptural scenes. He, he does the finish there on those. But anyway, that's coming back with um, uh, some new twists and uh, some very funny, thought-provoking stories. Mark's already written it all. I've read it all. Starting at in December. And then we got one more on this wave of Ahoy Comics. And it's um, Return of the Wrong Earth, my series with Jamal Weigel and Juan Castro about the campy mass crime fighter and his gritty, more modern version have swapped births. And they're, they're, they've, they've had some trouble dealing with uh, their new smiles. But there's going to be a, in this one, they're going to end up on the same Earth, yet a third Earth, Earth Zeta, and uh, they're going to have to work together, and I don't think they can. You have some really great titles. At, at times, kind of can push things a little bit, but but in a way that uh, you, you can appreciate the humor, and um, uh, I love what you guys are doing at Ahoy Comics. So uh, everyone, please go out next week, October 6th, hit up your local bookstore or online at Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Indie Bound and pick up Edgar Allan Poe's Snifter of Terror season two trade paperback. And then on October 21st, uh, new comic book day, hit up your local comic shop or our favorite online retailer and pick up the new volume, Edgar Allan Poe's Snifter of Blood number one. So thank you again for my guest, Tom Payer, for taking the time to be with us and talk more about Ahoy and, and your upcoming projects. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you very much. This has been a pleasure.